St. Michael's Cathedral is truly one of Toronto's most beloved landmarks and the headquarters of the Catholic faith in Ontario. The magnificent steeple is a powerful symbol on Toronto's skyline. But the true history of this enduring structure lies beneath. This unfinished dirt basement is the final resting place for 67 people that helped fund, build, and operate St. Michael's Cathedral for over a century and a half, including Bishop Michael Power, the man with the vision to build this amazing house of worship. The people who were laid to rest under this historic building were some of the founding fathers of the great city of Toronto helping to transform what was then known as the Settlement of York into the world-class metropolis that exists here today. People like Dr. John King, a distinguished professor of medicine at the University of Toronto, and John Elmsley, who took on a leading role in the politics of Upper Canada. Sir Charles Chichester, a Lieutenant Colonel of the 81st Regiment, also resides here. His burial was accompanied by a 19-gun salute made possible only because the roof of the cathedral had not yet been completed. The Sisters of Loretto, who came from Ireland at Bishop Power's request to help institute a school here, are also interred in this sacred space. All the people buried below the cathedral had an incredible connection to the church. Their faith and devotion helped give life to St. Michael's, and helped to make it the spiritual focus of the community. When restoration began on the cathedral, one of the primary objectives was to create a full finished basement, including a more dignified crypt for these devoted people. The process of relocating precious remains, most of which are over a century and a half old, is a very delicate process. Before work begins, Cardinal Thomas Collins gives the project his blessing. The first step requires Masons to carefully remove the headstones of the current crypts so that they can be reinstalled on the new ones. taking apart the tombs so that later on we can catalog and relocate the tombs in another location on the building. Next, a specialized archaeological team is brought in to oversee the process of relocation of these cherished remains. Extreme care is given to each casket as it is moved into a temporary resting place. After every casket is catalogued and secured, the construction team mobilizes and begins an impressive engineering feat. We're going to make it about two inches. Okay. The reason why we cannot go with an embed grow, the grow is two inches thick. Creating a support system for this massive 168-year-old structure that will enable them to dig below the cathedral to create a basement with 12-foot ceilings. Forms are built, anchors are tightened, and the concrete is poured. Just like that, the cathedral has new perimeter walls supporting her old bones. With the new basement height established, the perimeter benching starts to take shape. This benching area will lead to the side crypts, which are also being tended to by highly skilled masons. Okay, 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 okay. Before we use the wedges, but when you move this way, the wedge come out, you go that way. This, we can adjust, you know, this hold it, this hold it. Now we have to go that way. Large pieces of the original stone are being repositioned and restored as part of the process. These pieces stay here. One, second one. On the sides, we got one, two, three, four pieces. Okay, one, two, three, four pieces. And the piece what we got on the bottom stay on the top. We have to turn the bracket because after we have no room. Yeah, she's going. Yeah, if you give me four. 
With the stones removed, the crypt walls can be rebuilt. We're bricking up a partition wall for the number 27 Hughes Crypt. Being able to say we were in that basement, we were built the crypts, and we relocated most, some of the important people in Toronto. It's very rewarding. Focus now shifts to the main basement area and the construction of the new crypts for the displaced remains. Other than the flashy safety vests being worn, this process is the same as it would have been during the original construction. It begins with the construction of the wooden form. It's just been made of two by four and then this masonite, which is a bendy sort of wood, you can just flex it over the arch sign, you know. This is where I have spaced out the brickwork joints. Yeah. Each one of them is a brick, that's the joint. Brick, yeah. joint, brick, joint. I've also marked whether it's going to be a, a stretcher or a header. Keep the bed joint back, set the brick on, oh. and then the mortar stays back or half inch. As with anything hand built, it is meticulous, painstaking, and highly skilled work. And then once we pull out the template, the boys go in and point it all up, see okay. what they're doing there now. The new crypts are given another formal blessing before receiving their charges, a secure final resting place for 67 souls. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. O God, by whose mercy the faithful departed find rest, bless this grave, and send your holy angel to watch over it. As we bury here the bodies of our brothers and sisters, deliver their souls from every bondage of sin, that they may rejoice in you forever with your saints. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Today we're doing all move. Very happy. Everybody's happy. The way that it turned out, uh, craftsmanship from Dill and the Crips is excellent. So that's that crib there. Yeah. And, and he has all the names lined up okay. here. It's just, right. I just printed this now. I couldn't give you a big one. Yep. Upper level. So my name's David Robertson. I work for Archaeological Services. And we've been working with the cathedral, the diocese, for the last four or five years. As part of the whole creation of the crypt uh, chapel, we removed the bodies from the crypts that were being demolished because they were in such bad shape. And we've been transferring them to the new crypts as they're being built. We're keeping the families together. Basically everyone is being reunited, original to the crypts they were in in the first place. This whole project is all about that really because the crypt was essentially inaccessible un until this project. My understanding is there were still descendants who wanted to come and pay their respects. And you know, it wasn't a place they could do that. So this project is making that possible. There was a very small four foot crawl space down there. 67 people are buried down there. Had you seen it before, the invasion of all the modern convenience that came into the cathedral over 160 years, that was the only place they could be put. So all these graves had mechanical machinery, pipes and wiring run right across them. It wasn't very dignified. So we started looking at what can we do with this space to make it more dignified, better for our use. And so we decided what we needed to do is excavate down below. Eventually a crypt chapel will be there that will dignify those graves so that people can come and actually see them now, which you couldn't before. We're also planning perhaps having niches for ashes so people can also have their relatives buried there. At the so we're exploring those opportunities.
with the ceiling of the crypts, all that remains is to replace the headstones and markers, and the descendants of these founding families will have a proper setting to pay their respects. <laughs>